Let's keep calm and mother on. Mothering is way too important to do alone and way too serious to be serious all the time. My name is Christy Thomas, and I am here shoulder to shoulder with you, mothering and enjoying life together. This is the podcast where you can focus on being mindful and taking a deep breath with me and learning new things so you can pause and savor the amazing life you already have. Now let's go. Oh, I am very excited today to welcome Stephanie O'Day to uh, Keep Calm Mother On. You may know her more as the Crock-Pot Lady, but that's not why I like Stephanie. I like Stephanie because she reminds me to slow down. Just like I remind all of you to slow down, you know, I have to have my own mentors and she's one of them. Welcome, Stephanie. Oh, you're a sweetheart. Thank you for having me. I'm absolutely thrilled. I, I, I just am so excited. We got to talk for your podcast and now you get to come onto mine. But I have been thinking and ruminating on our conversation. I've now gone back and listened to quite a few of your guided meditations and they're so helpful. And, and I really encourage people to take the time and not skip over them. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but, but sit and, and unplug and, um, I haven't pulled the plunge, but I've been scouring Amazon for different um, meditation pillows and mats. And how, how do you pronounce it? A Zafu? It's this like yeah. meditative pillow. Which I got um, mine from Zillow, I want. the one I use. Or Say not again? Zillow, not Zulu. Zillow's the real estate. Zulily. Oh, I hit Zulily. a sale on Zulily oh, okay. that sometimes okay. they have meditation things. Okay. and And are you finding that just having a dedicated place to just sort of sit. Is it similar to a yoga mat that once you're on it, you just sort of feel um, like yes and no, but done? really it's just the, the trigger of the pillow that if I move Ooh. the pillow around my house, that that's enough of a trigger. Oh, interesting. I like that. Okay. It's and simpler. I, according to the reviews <laughs> yeah. on Amazon, it makes a great cat bed. So Ooh. there's that there you go. That makes sense. My cat hasn't like enjoyed mine, but I can see other cats doing that. Cats are weird like that. Cats are weird. Cats are weird. I got to tell you though. So if we're talking about slowing down and yeah. being in a meditative state, watching a cat is just fascinating and such an like amazing life lesson because cats and especially like wild cats in general to the naked eye look so lazy, yet when they are ready to pounce, mm-hmm. they just do so. And they've sort of stored all of this energy and, and are ready to hunt and are ready to take action. And I really think that is such a great metaphor for taking the time to pay yourself first and recharge your batteries. Because then when you do need to act and, and you do need to quickly perform or, or knock something out of yeah. the park, you have this stored mental and physical energy and can take action. Whereas on the other extreme, if you're in constant hustle and go mode, yeah. you have the adrenaline and the cortisol going through your body all the time. You you don't know the difference. Yeah, if anymore. you're in frantic you like hummingbird mode, like... Yes. Oh, I love that phrase, hummingbird mode. Gosh, they're beautiful, but you're absolutely right. They need to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they can't. Like they're designed, right? Like they can't rest. But but that doesn't feel good in my human body. No, it it doesn't. It doesn't. And I'm coming across more and more women being diagnosed with adrenal fatigue and just realizing that if you don't proactively slow yourself down, your body will force you to do so. I agree. And I keep noticing it um, on online and people talking about that more. So let's learn a little bit about you. You are a mom to three kids. Is that right, Stephanie? I do have, yeah. And Although two are technically adults. Yeah. Which makes I mean, they're sad. still your kids, but they're, <laughs> well, they're grown. And, and everybody's <laughs> home this weekend. So that's exciting. So, um, so my oldest graduated from college, but she's home. And then my middle one is in college, but she's home this weekend. And so while I was climbing in bed last night, I told my husband, Adam, and I also just learned that our husbands are both naked. Yeah. Adam, which is <laughs> wonderful. Um, 
that I will sleep so deep because all my babies are under one roof. Yeah. It's just this sort of collective sigh. It's an exhale. They all are. I don't need to track them on their phone. They're here. (laughs) (laughs) That's so good to know. So how did you turn from slow cooking in the crockpot world to slow living as something you wanted to talk about? Sure. Sure. So absolutely. So the slow cooking site, so a year of slow cooking started with a year of crock potting and I wanted to sort of prove to myself and to my husband that I could make something from nothing. (laughs) I always just wanted to stay home with my kids, but we live in the San Francisco area and things are super expensive. So super um, expensive, super expensive. So, so being a stay at home trophy wife was not (laughs) in the cards. (laughs) I needed to pull my weight. So I made a new year's resolution to use my crock pot slow cooker every day for a year and write about it online with the idea that perhaps maybe something would come from that. Maybe a memoir or or maybe some sort of of mentoring women on how to stick to goals and follow through on New Year's resolutions. That was the idea. What happened was I um, was reached out to by television producers and, and book agents to write cookbooks, <laughs> yeah. even though I, I, I don't like to cook. I really don't like to cook, which is why I like the crock pot. You <laughs> put it all in and you push a button and it's magic. So that was a, a bit of kind of a, a brain freak out. Like, like t- I mean, talk about imposter syndrome and all these things, because how can you yeah. tell me I'm a cook? <laughs> and can write cookbooks that that sold very well. I'm, I'm very blessed in that way. Like, yeah, and, they and really think, hit the market and resonated. They, they, they did, but I think it's because I'm a real person and I'm not show offy, mm-hmm. fancy. You have to cut your onion this way. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I use my pampered chef choppery thingy because an onion is an onion is an onion. And I don't care if my pieces are perfect. I'm not trying to compete with Bobby Flay. I just want right, to feed your the intention at the end of the day. Yeah. I just wanted to feed the babies. So, so that's what happened. And, and the cookbooks did well and I loved it. The idea that I was helping people from all over the world get dinner on the table in, in a healthy way um with very little effort very little effort um was really gratifying to me and and then the market shifted and yeah. the book publishers and my literary agent my agent actually fired me um because they wanted me to write pressure cooker cookbooks oh and yeah instant pot was huge, the trend huge. the trend shifted yes and i so i bought an instant pot and I hate it. I just hated it. <laughs> I I didn't want to cook a frozen chicken in 45 minutes. That's not how my brain works. At the end of the day, I've got tired kids. I'm cranky. I don't want to be in the kitchen figuring out dinner. I liked it early in the morning. I was caffeinated. I was coherent. I could put the stuff in the pot uh-huh. and then never think about it. Until right. Six, There's so yeah. much miracle. And mom was asking me on the phone. We were talking about life and catching up. And she's like, well, now that we've got sports in the evenings, like, how do you get dinner on the table? I was like, well, I started at breakfast. Yeah. Like, and, and I don't always use my messy. crock pot, the already but messy like for breakfast, you might as well throw the chicken in the pot. Yeah. Like, for and, me, it's not always it, a crock pot meal, but like starting it then was a trick that yeah. I learned because of crock pot meals. Like you have to think ahead and you to give yourself to that ahead. grace. Yeah. And then, and then, I mean, my kids are grown now, but when they were little, they absolutely had witching hours and the best. Well, I do too. <laughs> It's true. It's true. But, but the best thing when they were like between two and four, so before after school sports, mm-hmm. the best thing was to take them to the park, take them, for yeah. a walk, get them out of the house. So me with crying toddlers grabbing my ankles, wielding a knife or sauteing <laughs> on the stove, like none of that made sense. It, w- it literally wasn't safe. So the instant pot, yes can be a very helpful tool to some people. It wasn't helpful to me. It it bothered me. It's counterintuitive so to me. Like, cause you have to add in the time that it takes to warm up. 
So every time I try to make an Instant Pot recipe, just to put this out there for people who may have one, like yeah. there is more time that it takes than what the recipe says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I, when you're already hungry at the end of the night and then you have to make dinner, you are already in this kind of frenzied Yeah, mode. that's my witching and, hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, and the idea that it's a pressure cooker it, like, like literal pressure. It was, was just so counterintuitive of any philosophy I had in life. So, so I unplugged everything. I just, I'm like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm just not <laughs> doing that. And, and at the same time, um, I was helping take care of my grandma and she was, um, not doing well and she since passed away. And then I helped my mom yeah. kind of clear out her house and, and go through all these things. And I just, had really shifted and the idea of coming up with yet another pot roast recipe just seemed so fake and so phony. And and that's the nature of the internet is you yeah. have to keep feeding the beast and you change one or two ingredients and slap on a new name mm-hmm. and all of a sudden Google has decided you have a brand new recipe. Mm-hmm. But I knew a barbecue pot roast is a barbecue pot roast is a barbecue yeah. pot roast, regardless of if you're in the mood for chipotle chili powder. <laughs> like it's, it's all the same thing. So it, it just really didn't feel good. So, um, so when the entire world, uh, hit the pause button during yeah. the pandemic, I, I just really sort of went inside in my brain and, um, and like, what is it I want to do? Like, what do I want to be known for? And, and the idea of, taking things slow and realizing that if we're lucky, life is long. And and the pandemic just showed us that when you actively slow down on purpose, yeah. all of a sudden your days are longer. Yeah. Wow. And it reminded yeah. us how fragile life is, right? Like it, it was such a so stark why, reminder. Why cram as much as you can and cramming in things you don't even want to do. Mm-hmm. So it, it was so freeing. To have excuses like, yeah, I don't want to go to that party. Yeah, I don't want to see these people. I don't know who these people hang yeah. out with. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that anymore. And and the idea that we could do jigsaw puzzles at 3 yeah. p.m. again, it, it was just... Yeah, you know, we got into watching jigsaw puzzles on YouTube even. We found like we a... We didn't know that. Was yeah, thing. like <laughs> there's a whole YouTube channel, Karen Puzzles. And then we tried out different that's type so of puzzles because of what Karen suggested and tried out new strategies. Like oh, it's a whole... <laughs> life yeah. is funny. Like, like Life is. Life is. So I, um, so I ended up getting certified for life coaching, which is really funny because... My background was in social work and, and psychology oh, wow. before having children of my own. Um, and really, it's all just the same. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> so it's just a new a really way to access. Listener, um, and, and the idea that humans aren't broken and don't need to get fixed. Mm-hmm. And if you really are an active listener and engager and you're talking to another human and give them the opportunity they can talk themselves through almost anything. And and that's what life coaching is, um, is, is helping people get from where they are to where they want to be. Um, whereas opposed to when you need to have therapy, and I am a huge proponent of mm-hmm. therapy, but if there's something that you can't move through on your own or something from your past that's really triggering you or has a a traumatic response in your body, Mm -hmm. working that through with a therapist is beyond helpful. But if you are at peace and you're ready to move forward, just a life coach helps you sort of, um, I I liken it to like Hansel and Gretel. Like we just sprinkle the breadcrumbs. Yeah. You just, yeah. You you just just follow the path a little bit instead of trying to bushwhack your own. Right. And it, and it's not something that I have, have prescribed. It's something that each person comes up with Mm -hmm. on their own. And so, and so that's what I like. Um, and so that's what I do now. And I started the slow living podcast and, um, and I get to talk to people like you. Isn't it amazing? (laughs) It's so much fun. It it really, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, I love that you're on the other side of the country right now. And, um, (laughs) and actually through zoom and, and through the pandemic, because of this, yeah. the, the technology has really connected people in so many ways that my hope is 
when we look back on this period of time, 10, 15 years from now, we realize that while there was a lot of bad and a Mm -hmm. lot of scary, there was so much good, um, that, that hopefully gets remembered. I hope so. I hope that even now, three years later, right? Like I can look back and see the helpers that were all around and the ways that people did amazing things like the random cheering and grocery delivery for people who couldn't get out and toilet paper sharing. And (laughs) there's so So much good. I like that. I like that you, you pointed out Mr. Rogers and the looking for the helpers. And I, I think, I think when you're stuck in kind of a, a negative thought spiral or, or a frantic mm-hmm. feeling, um, it's really easy to find other people who are kind of down in that negative Nelly mindset. Yeah. And, and, and the, that same misery like this company is absolutely true. And if you're trying to look for the horizon, if you're trying to get out of that, um, sometimes you can feel alone. And so looking for those helpers and, and sometimes there's not very many. And, and, and you feel like you're going against the herd by, by deciding to, to look for, for the good versus kind of being stuck yeah. Kind of, kind of dark place. And our brain is wired for that dark place, right? Like that's the protective mechanism. Yeah. So Absolutely. if someone's feeling that, like that, that's because your brain wants to help you stay sidestep safe. danger and stay safe. That, that, that's the evolutionary advantage is the automatic negative thought, which is. Mm. Oh, so you just, you just used an acronym. Yeah, well, the ant. This. The <laughs> ant. Well, and it was so fun because, so my oldest, uh, her undergrad is psychology and she came home with that acronym ant. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is just brilliant. I'm because- trying to collect ant eaters, like stuffed animals now to leave around oh, my what house. A cute idea. Just oh, to like trigger that thought, right? Like that we can stop the ants. <laughs> you can stop the ants. And then it was, so, I got so excited that I couldn't sleep last night because, or not last night, but one of the nights yeah. I was very excited. Um, because the idea, like we're, we're in the San Francisco area. And so when it rains, the oh, ants yeah. Come in, but not all the time. And if you're paying attention, it's not the whole colony, it's one or two scout yep. ants. And so if you Snuff out and sound, I'm sorry, environmentalist, but if you snuff out <laughs> those scouter ants, they don't have the opportunity to go invite their friends right into your space. And it's just, wow, like this is mind blowing stuff to me. So, Isn't so it so is cool? Acronym, so it's automatic <laughs> negative thoughts. Yep. And, and if you have these sort of negative thoughts, try as, as hard as you can to snuff them out before they overtake. Do you have practices? What do you do when you notice them? So, um, so I, I like to just kind of slow down and take a deep breath. So, um, I'm a huge fan of acronyms. So lately my acronym for slow is simply look only within. And when you take a deep breath and you kind of calm yourself down and you ask an open-ended question, your brain answers it for you because we are problem solvers. We are here. Yeah. We, we want to do it. So if you, if you say, if you just kind of like, what do, what do I need right now? What does my body need right now? And, and sometimes the answer is a nap, <laughs> a drink of water to go outside, to close the freaking computer. Like, like, right. like there are brain, basic we'll needs that we ignore. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and I think hustle mode and frenzy of, Constantly feeling like you have to do more, be more, achieve more, be seen more um, is really prevalent. And especially if you work in the online space, you feel like if you're not everywhere all of the time, you're doing it wrong. When really what's important is the humans, that the actual for <laughs> reals humans in your house, not the faceless people. Yeah, the like the humans you can actually touch. <laughs> yeah. And, and stop with the, oh, just one second. Oh, oh, just one second. Oh, let me just post this. Oh, so, so I get it. There, there's a time yeah. and place, especially if you're trying to run an online business, but there are only four for a certain amount of time. 
and, and, and hug on the babies as much as you can. So have you been able to teach this well to your big kids or model this? How do you feel? So I think through osmosis, hopefully some of it is starting to permeate. Um, my oldest is 21. So she's very aware and, and she likes yoga. She likes meditation. She listens to uplifting podcasts. Um, she also taps out when she's overstimulated Ooh, yeah. and, and goes to bed early. So she'll be like, I'm just done and I'll go to bed, even if it's like 745. And, and sometimes her sisters make fun of her um, <laughs> because they're teenagers and that's what teenagers do. But, um, but she, she listens to her body and honors it. And, and I'm thankful for that. My 18 year old is uh, in the middle of her freshman year of college. So she, um, Knows everything. And, um, <laughs> they're so uh, amazingly wise at 18. They're so wise. They're so wise. So she, um, she's not quite there from a psychological standpoint, but, um, I, I think it will come. I, I think she's too excited right now to, um, stay up super late mm -hmm. and not be told what to do and, um, and yeah. eat sugar when she, all the freedom. Sugar. Yeah, all, all the freedom. So she's still exploring that. And then, um, my youngest is 13 and she is naturally gravitating towards what she calls the, the quote unquote good kids. Okay. So the other day she texted and she said she was going to go downtown with a group of friends. But then those friends started acting like stupid 13 year olds and, right. and swearing <laughs> and, and just being loud and obnoxious. And, and she didn't want to be a part of that. And so she texted, actually she called me and she's like, can you just stay on the phone with me for a second? I'm like, yeah. And so we <laughs> stayed on the phone and she made it seem like she had an important phone call and, yeah. and she just walked home. And so she removed herself from that. And so I think being self-aware and knowing who you are, yeah. deep down inside and what you stand for is so important to teach our children. So then when they see others, they know, okay, yeah, that's great for them. I'm, I'm not going right. to diminish. Yeah, we don't have to yuck turning. on their yum, right? Yeah, but that I don't want to be associated with that. I don't want to do that. So she came home and, um, and then FaceTimed a, a different friend <laughs> <laughs> from a different school district who happened to, to be home. But, uh, yeah, so it's really interesting to see it in real life. Yeah. I will say my older children, um, have thanked me for limiting social media and for not allowing them to do some of the things that some of their friends have done. This is a good and conversation then, to hear with moms of older kids. This is good. Yeah. I'm leaning in here because mine are yeah. 16 and 15 and we're mm -hmm. in that sticky, sticky yeah. moment with so, my so girls. So evidently Facebook is, is old. Is yeah. Facebook old is kind people. of just so, for yeah, old they're, people. They're not interested in that. <laughs> so, um, but, but I do remember driving to a soccer practice and I had three or four kids in the back of the minivan. And one of them was talking about how they had 800 Instagram followers. And I snapped off the radio and I'm like looking at her in the rear view. And this is not my child, but yeah. I, I totally mom. Well, her. well, like, I think the mom village, like we need to value that. Like the yeah. other moms in my kid's life are some of the most yeah. important people. Like mm -hmm. I want them to be good moms. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm like, why do you have 800 Instagram followers? And she, and she's like, well, I just do. And I'm like, do you know 800 people? And she, and she, she said, no. And I said, so that's not okay. Like you can't be posting selfies and all of this stuff and have strangers watching your every move. Like, like really think that through. Um, cause that's just, I want to say I probably used the word weird, which probably isn't the best word to use in the time, but I was, I just was yeah. flabbergasted. You're like, a wait a second here. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not normal. It's not okay. So, um, so I, I have done things like that. Um, I do know that when I first got started writing online, um, mommy blogs were a big thing and sharing lots of stories about children and, and the day-to-day -day things and the potty training and yeah. And, and the meltdowns, the meltdowns and, and filming it and putting it on the internet for, for likes and shares and, 
uh, was very prevalent. And I had always decided I would never use my children's name online and I wouldn't post their, their faces. So, I mean, I've posted the back of their head or their feet or hands or something like that, but not their faces. And that was just a conscious decision I decided because that's what felt good to me. Mm -hmm. The, The idea of somehow using them to propel me forward never sit right. And and I'm not denouncing anyone who has made a difference. No, but it's a big conversation right now. Like yeah. laws for kids working on their parents' social media feeds. Yeah. yeah. It it so and and I wasn't thinking of it that way. I just thought it was creepy and weird. Like I wanted <laughs> them to have their own name, their own identity. Yeah. I wanted if someone later to get into college or a first job was to Google them. They were, they're not going to find their mom's cookbook blog. Like I didn't <laughs> want that for them at all. Um, and, and I'm thrilled that I stuck to that and they have since thanked me. Um, be- because they're still too young and, yeah. and, and, and they're older now and they can do what they want now. But, um, the, it just taking away their right and, and putting a digital footprint online when, I couldn't have their consent. And even if they said yes at six, seven, eight years old, they wouldn't have known the yeah, implications. They don't they really know what that meant. And and so uh, talking disparagingly about them or my husband was never something um, I wanted to do in any way. And, and I do remember um, getting an email randomly here and there of um, someone asking if I really did have kids or if I was just <laughs> pretending. I'm like, no, I really do. I really am tired. <laughs> You're like, nope, I'm really living this lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. So um so I'm I'm happy about that. I just um I was always very aware that the internet was forever. And even if you delete something, it doesn't mean it's deleted because someone could have captured a screenshot yep. or, or filmed themselves the the it and and I just knew that I didn't want um to be to be embarrassed or, or potentially embarrass my children. So it sounds like a big part of your slow living is self-awareness and, and giving yourself time to think about things from a bigger picture. How do, yeah. does that come naturally to you, Stephanie? Maybe. <laughs> so uh, maybe I don't, I, I think I, um, it, it's really tricky because I like mindfulness and I like meditation and yoga, but I do try and, and look forward. Um, like what will I be like in my seventies, eighties? Yeah. And, and then try and, and, and work backwards. So if I want to be healthy and active in my seventies and eighties, mm-hmm. in my thirties and forties, I got to take care of myself. I, I can't be down in a bottle of wine every night. I, I can't be right doing some of these things that. Uh, the Real Housewives. <laughs> yeah, so show right, you, it's, that, it's that. I think it's the do. Stephen like, Covey yeah, no. line, right? Like working with the end in mind. Oh, okay. So I love Stephen Covey, but I didn't know that. Yeah, I that think he's he, got a he like. That, that's part yes. of his okay. habits of like thinking about where you want to end up, and then. So okay. I think about eighty-year-old me a lot too. Yeah, yeah, and and it's tricky because a naysayer will say you can get hit by a bus tomorrow, and it's true. Yeah, I might not make it to 80, but that's, yeah, that's okay. (laughs) It it is okay. And, but I'm not going to decide that I'm going to die early or get hit by a bus. Um, because that cram, that creates this feeling like you're falling behind or like there's too much to do and not enough time to do it. It's the hummingbird energy. Yeah. It, it, it creates this, the, and, and truly, hummingbird like butterfly uncomfortable feeling mm-hmm. in your chest um which is the anxiety that's building up and if you cut yourself grace and and realize that you've got we'll use children for for instance you've got 18 to 20 years with right. them in your house this particular summer vacation doesn't need to be the best of the best of the best no. of the best because really what you're trying to create is an overall feeling and and hopefully what you want is you want your home and your family life to be comfortable and peaceful and a place that your adult children 
can come back to and feel warm and loved. And if you are trying so hard to create this like amazing Instagram-y Pinterest yeah. spring break where you're frantically making a four layer cake in the shape of a sandcastle, but you're snapping at everyone who's walking in your kitchen. That's, you're doing it for the wrong. Yeah. You're totally doing it for the wrong reasons here. So, um, so I mean, my kids are perfectly okay with store bought cake mix. So it's fine. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Mine too. Even the store bought cakes are good with them too. Yeah, they're absolutely okay. <laughs> absolutely okay. We're gluten free. So because of that, it creates sometimes um a wrench in things yeah but but yeah yeah no i i totally get so so that's with with the with the idea of keeping the the ending in sight yeah and i i guess i've always been sort of wired that way when when i was younger i would envision what married life and 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 motherhood yeah felt would feel like or or dream like and 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 try and 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 fulfill it out so when it comes to to goal setting and achieving i'm great at keeping that big vision in mind of what i think it's going to feel like and and focusing on the feelings for me is what's important because for most of us when we're trying to achieve a goal or chase a goal, it's because you think you're going to feel better when you get there. Mm-hmm. But if you can try and, and feel the way you want to, f- you you imagine it'll be along the way, you won't race through the stuff because the the joy is absolutely in the journey and in and, and taking the time and, and doing the things that need to happen in order to get to where you want to go. That's what life is. Life Mm -hmm. isn't about rushing from one milestone to the next milestone to the next milestone. Um, Because what happens is you've got all of this collateral damage along the way when you're so focused on only one thing. And, and, And that's not a life well lived. That's being snappish when you don't want to be snappish Mm -hmm. that's maybe neglecting your health because you're so busy building this business or or um neglecting your relationship because you're frantically trying yeah i mean that's a trope in movies right for a reason (laughs) the overworked (laughs) chris the overworked lawyer is always part of a hallmark christmas movie (laughs) I know. And then they end up on this really tranquil farm, which uh-huh. is funny because if you've ever worked on a farm, it's a lot of work. It's work. <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's work. So how does a person gener- – so say they want to add more joy or they, they, they're they saying like, okay, Stephanie, I see what you're doing. When I'm 80, I want to have enjoyed my kids. I want to have enjoyed my family. But I don't feel joy right now. So mm. So what do I do then? Yeah. So, so in the podcast, um, I teach that there's five steps to slow living. And the first one is to declutter what's not working for you. And so for some of us, it's actual physical clutter Uh in your house because it's really difficult to have a calm, peaceful, joyful house. If all you see are piles of things that sort of feel like they're haunting you. Yeah. If you're just managing all the things, all the things. So, so decluttering. And, and sometimes you need to declutter your calendar. Sometimes you need to declutter the people in your life. If you've got a friend who isn't helping you rise to, to, to the level you want to, and you're pouring all your energy into helping her, but it's not coming back, put, put it on pause for, for a little bit. Not forever. Maybe give yourself a five-day, 10-day hiatus. And, and then circle back and see how you feel. But, but decluttering is important. And if you go back to, to simply looking only within, you know, your subconscious will tell you if you just sit quietly and I'm like, okay, staff, what isn't working for me right now? What, what do I need to change? What isn't working? The, the answer comes. The, the answer always. So it's trusting comes. that answer, even if yeah. it feels hard. Yeah. So it's interesting. So, so some of the women that I work with, the answer that bubbles up is wine. Um, and especially right now with, um, we're still in the kind of first quarter 
of the new year mm -hmm. and, and health is on lots of people's mind. And, and if it's a good idea, it'll keep circling back. If, it, if it's a stupid harebrained idea, you're going to lose it. But, but if it's a good idea and, and if your intuition and your inner gut is trying to guide you, that little voice, it will, will pop back up, come, come back up. And then the second step in the five steps of solo living is to know where you're headed. So, so what is the dream goal? What is it that you're looking for? And, and you had said that Stephen Covey talks about having the end goal in mind. So, so for me, if I'm looking back as seven year old Steph, I want to have so much joy and, and just peace and, and smile and sparkle in my eye that I gave it my all. And, and if 70 is too far away, shorten it down. So, so maybe it's in the next five years, the, the, the goal I'm really yeah. working towards you, the dream I'm trying to do is, is write this book or, or launch this candle making business, like something, something you have that in your mind and then you're just moving forward. And then step number three is while you're moving forward, you're really paying attention to the here and the now and in the present. And you're not letting all of those other puzzle pieces kind of fall away. You, you've got to stay present. You've got to um, try your hardest to be in this kind of attitude of, of gratitude as much as you can, because in life stuff happens. It's, <laughs> it's not, it's not perfect. The toilet will overflow. You will have a hurricane warning. You, you, you will pop a tire. Like yeah. this is real, but it doesn't mean you turn around and go home. You, it's just, it might take a little longer. Yeah. And There's just a detour, just another a road to take something slightly different, but keep going. Yeah. Keep, keep going. And then, and then that really brings us to four, which is teeny tiny action steps every day, what, what, whatever it is. If, if you're working on a novel, you're, you're setting a timer for 10 minutes and, and you're writing and it doesn't need to make sense to anyone, but you're, you're getting it out in your head. And, and maybe someone looking in wouldn't think you're right. looking for progress, but you know, you're, you're constantly inching towards that goal. And then five is just tweaking and fine tuning as needed because again, you are not a spreadsheet. Your <laughs> life will not be linear in, in any way. And, um, and, and you'll, you'll figure it out very soon. If, if your if your end goal is a certain type of business or, or something that you're trying to create, it's so easy to get distracted by, oh, now I need to focus on Instagram or, oh, I need to go do this TikTok reel. But if, but if you're. Yeah. You're Cause there, there's that, so much noise and so much trend and so many experts that I love going back to the idea of just looking within yourself and slowing down. Yeah. Yeah. It, because, it, because again, the, the answers will just make themselves known and it'll be so obvious. And in a big part, when it comes to the, the noise and the nonsense and, and um, the, the experts. Yeah, that, that not every expert is for you. <laughs> yeah, and, and they're trying to sell you something. Like they're trying to keep you dissatisfied and making you think your life will be complete if you have the six-pack abs yeah. or your husband brings home flowers every Friday night. And, and that's not true. What, what, what's true is figuring out what your dream life looks like and, and it's not going to mirror anyone else's. So you know deep down inside what will make you feel happy and fulfilled. And, and it's not what the marketers tell you it will be. Thank you for that permission. Like I think someone else needed that permission here because it's so noisy out there. It's so, it's so easy to feel behind all the time when you get on the internet nowadays. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. I really appreciate this conversation and all that you give online. You have amazing books. You've got some great ebooks that I've read about slowing down and decluttering and having fasting schedules. You've, you're a wealth of resources and your podcast 
is fantastic. So thank you for being you and thank you for tweaking and keeping going and and sharing simplicity, starting with a crock pot. <laughs> <laughs> It really is a marvelous kitchen tool. I really like it. (laughs) It really is. But like, it's so amazing that like you decided, oh, I needed to have this side hustle. I'm going to start with this one idea. And then from there, because of your tweaking, like all these little branches keep coming off. They're all related. They are. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Well, I have two last questions for you. The first is... What is an act of self-care that you go to right now? So I really like um, getting up early. And for some people, that might not sound like self-care. It might sound like torture. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it in the morning time, it's just a quiet house. And it's me in the coffee pot. And I like to journal and and do some yoga and meditate. And I do it all together. I sit on my yoga mat and I, I've got my journal and, and I have a, a one page journaling sheet that actually, um, if you're okay, I can plug yes, it. Yes, please. It's at stephanieoday.com forward slash daily. And it's, you can just print it out. It's a daily one page journaling worksheet. Um, and, and so I, I write some things down. I do some stretches. I drink my yoga and, um, it's, it's about 45 minutes ish where if I take that time, I am now just set up mm-hmm. for my day um, and, and not checking email and not scrolling the phone. The, the phone is still on the charger, but it's, it's really just me and my cup of coffee and the yoga mat. And, um, and it's just really a, a very peaceful and, and helpful way for me to center myself before then my all is given to other people. I love that. And how are you having fun as a family? <laughs> so we're, we're uh, I got a puzzle board for Christmas. I Yay! Was given, uh, I, I'm so excited. I was given a hundred dollar gift card from Amazon. And so I just started searching because it seemed like such a frivolous thing. And most certainly not a necessity because we have a floor, we have a table, right? but I wanted this puzzle board. And so it um, was on Amazon and it has these drawers and it's movable. So it's large, it's the size of a tabletop, but then we put it on another tabletop. And then if guests are coming, we can shove it under the couch. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and it's just so nice. And, and because of that, we walk by it and put one or two pieces in and then that's it. And and it is so slow and so thoughtful. And we don't have this frantic, got to finish the thousand piece puzzle. Right. Cause yeah, because it comes so over, it covers my whole dining room table. So there's yeah. an urgency. <laughs> there is an urgency. And I think that's the biggest takeaway is dial back the urgency. Um, it's all going to be okay. If, if I could hug all of you and just promise you it's all going to be okay. If, if you follow your gut, if you follow your intuition, you're already all smart people. You already know how to research. The, the answers are in the computer. If, if something comes up and you don't know how to do something, you'll find the answer. You don't need to constantly scroll, scroll, scroll right now. Just trust that you will find what you're looking for at the right time and at the right place. And that's a beautiful way to end this. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for being here. And I want to remind you that you are exactly the right mom for your kids. I'm so glad you're here on Earth with me. Thank you. I hope this episode is meeting you exactly where you need to. It's meeting me where I need to be met. There are 10 more days left in the month of July. So let July be July. Embrace simplicity. Use Stephanie's steps and dream about your future and what your best future life could possibly look like. Because you've already always been good enough, right? You've already always been good enough and you're already exactly the right mom for your kids so invest in the things you want to have when you're 80 years old and um i'm so glad you're here
Happy Friday, everyone.